All right. Last game, which you guys have been begging for. I already prepared everything, so you guys can ask what you want. This game, some people said was the game of the year. Must have been a slow year. This game's all right. Now, as you all know, I'll pretend there's somebody here. That means they don't know. Um, I, I never knew about Mads Anderson, whether it was one, two, or three people. Because there's a Mads Anderson who's very good at backgammon. There's a Mads Anderson who's very good at poker. There's a Mads Anderson who's very good at chess. And I was wondering, is it one, two, or three people? It turns out it's two people. The guy who's good at chess is only good at chess. And the other guy is good at backgammon and poker. So there's two Mads Andersons. There's another Mads Anderson who is, is some famous, like, maybe soccer player? Yeah, there were like four Mads Andersons that were in Wikipedia. I think he's, I think it's soccer or is it car racing? Huh. Anyway, this is the chess guy. So if people think it's the same guy, the backgammon poker guy is going to be in a lot of trouble because they think that he you know, got crushed. There's a Polish bridge player um, who was like 2,500 feet a Polish junior chess champion and quit chess to play bridge and he's better at bridge. 1,500 centidews. Feather Light 2. Thank you. I forgot what his name was. It's, it's a Polish name. You're like, oh, that's Polish. But he's good at chess and bridge, as well as Irina Levitina, who is top five in the world for women in chess, quit chess, and she's top five or ten in the world for women in bridge. So there you go. Don't forget it. Ooh, better at choker. That's a good question. Yeah. And so on. Okay, so this is last but not least. This is the game of the round. White's like 25.80 feet A, and black is maybe 70 points less. The ratings are similar. Now, this game doesn't impress me as much as it'll impress you because I've seen all this before, okay? And I actually talked to, you know, my, my people in show business, and they said, well, what if Brad Pitt was black? And I said, that don't impress me much. You know, it doesn't impress me. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> this reminds me of two games. One game you know, and one game you do not know. Uh, one of the best games in Lone Pine, the year it was played, in the mid-70s, which actually, in the informant one, one of the best games of the year, was Bob Avery was white. He's a Michigan player you've never heard of. Still alive. I still get crazy emails from him. And uh, he was playing Gligorich. And Gligorich did something similar that happened in this game. And then the other game, the famous one, is Burn Fisher, the good Burn, Robert Burn, not the stupid Donald Burn game where Fisher sacks his queen for 40 pieces. Uh, the game from the U.S. Championship that Fisher famously won. Uh, that's very similar to what happened in this game. And I'm actually surprised that... Mads Anderson allowed the stuff that happened in this game. It's been seen before, and it's usually good for the guy who's doing it. So I'm, I'm surprised he, you know, he played a little loose, a little fast and loose. Yeah. <clears throat> Shania Twain also does it. In, yeah. Okay. So the opening was boring. They had virtually... A symmetrical position, but not literally. This is almost symmetrical, not quite. It's the boring world of Niels Bohr. All right. And since it's the boring world of Niels Bohr, obviously you would bet on Mads Anderson. Niels Bohr, Mads Anderson, come on. They're like, that, son. Pablo's like, Niels Bohr, who's that? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Etc. <clears throat> All right. So it, it continued to be boring, as was the style at the time. Now, one thing I've taught my advanced students, because my lower rated students, you know, I just tell them that like this is a bishop. And then when I ask them later, they go, pawn? 
parents. I mean, I teach them that. Um, is <clears throat> in any position where you castle kingside, when you move your rook off of the defensive, your f pawn, you have to realize that could be a target later. And sometimes you're like, there's no way that's a target. No way. <clears throat> and in this position, I wouldn't be too scared of F2 being a target here, but I would be aware of it because I move my rook off of F1. So that's what I do. Okay, so rook E8, and it still looks really boring, and the engine says it's equal. Always play bishop F1. You can't, you can't ignore that. C5, engine says it's about equal. Okay, I take you, you take me. The engine still says equality. Okay, g3 <clears throat> looks a little risky. Rook c8 lining up with the queen. All right. Again, it's about equal. Bishop h3 pinning the knight. <clears throat> Not so bad. Still about equal. Cd. And here the engine says you can take with the rook knight or the pawn, and they're all about equal. It slightly prefers... Well, it's changing its mind. It doesn't even have a mind that's changing it. Now it prefers knight takes. Okay, he played knight takes. The engine says this is fine. Bishop b4 pinning the knight. So it looks dangerous with the rook on c8. So, you know, I'd be scared. Knight e2. Okay, now knight e2 is actually the losing move. It's the losing move for like three reasons. One is it gives away the f3 square... So, like, the knight could go to f3. Obviously, if the knight's on d4, I can take it. Second, it blocks the queen from f2, making sacking on f2 more palatable. And almost as important, it lets black play d4 at some point, and that's going to be very dangerous. So, knight e2 actually loses by force. And in this position, if two engines were playing, white would not lose. Um... White probably has more than one move that's okay. Unfortunately, one of the moves is a move I say never play, and one of the moves I say always play. Um, but it prefers the move to never play. It wants to play f3 because now the knight is defending f3, the queen's defending the second rank, and we've stopped knight e4 forever. Um, you got to stop knight e4 because of the double pin here. And white didn't stop knight e4. He just defended his knight. That move is too passive and too meek. Uh, you could also play bishop takes here to ease the pressure by trading pieces. <clears throat> or you could play a3 and force a reckoning. Like, do something about that bishop. Okay. So, you know, if I was white in a position like this, and my opponent played rook c8, I would be very worried about CD Bishop B4, even if it wasn't good. I'd still be worried about it. So the engine is like, move your queen or play knight B5 attacking the bishop so you won't get pinned. And white literally didn't care. White's like, I'll go here. If you want to pin my knight, I don't care. And then, you know, then he probably should have cared. He should have talked to Ice-T before he played Bishop H3. Now his position's fine, but now he's got to play accurately, not his strong suit. Okay, and 92 loses. Now he's losing. Too much attack for black. Okay, black played knight e4. And knight e4 is a mistake. And the reason it's a mistake is the most amazing move I've shown on the stream so far. That move wasn't played. If Peter is here and Julian's here... They'll be like, oh, my God. You guys will also be impressed, but you won't understand how you should be impressed. You'll just be a little impressed. Julian and Peter will be like, I thought I was good at chess until the engine said this move. Queen takes e4, the only move. And obviously, both players missed that. <clears throat> there's, just, there's just no way to see that. That's crazy like Fox News. That's crazy. And the idea is if you take, rook takes, forks these, the queen moves somewhere. That's somewhere. And it's three pieces for uh, a queen. And the engine says it's equal. 
even if we get the two pieces for the rook by doing this, it says this is equal to. My rook can go here. This is hanging. My bishop can go to f1 if you check me. This rook can't get into the game. This is equal. All zeros. Okay. Now, obviously, neither player saw or cared about queen takes e4. It's just not a move you look at. And that's why knight e4 is not the best move, because if you're playing an engine, it plays queen takes e4 and you don't win. If you don't play knight e4 and it's two engines playing, then black plays knight e5 and black's position is excellent because, you know, it's terrible. Knight e2 is terrible. Yeah. Okay. Now, obviously, black didn't play queen takes e4 because he wasn't cheating with an engine. So, you know. Yeah. Charlotte Chester is like, say, what? Queen takes e4. God damn. <sighs> right. So now, if you're not going to sack your queen, which is fine, you have to watch out for knight f2. So the engine's second best move is rook f1. And Mads played a3. And he went from mad to bad. You know, sort of like going from ashy to classy. That's what he did. Right. And that's, that's pathetic. Sorry. That's pathetic. Okay. Knight takes f2 is the only move I'm scared of if I'm white. If you analyze knight f2 for two minutes and you're 2580 feet a, you don't play a3. So I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know. I, I, did he look at knight f2 and go, oh, yeah, that's fine for me. I think he just didn't look at knight f2. It's much more obvious here than it was in the Fisher game with Byrne or in the Avery game with Gligerich. It's much more obvious. I mean, it's ridiculous not to look at knight f2. If you looked at knight f2, it's ridiculous to think it's okay. Now, maybe for a lower rated player, you're like, I don't understand. Okay, if Peter was white here, he's 2300 something, he'd be scared to death of knight f2, even if it didn't work. Okay, and it does work. But he'd be scared to death of it. He might not play a3 because knight f2, and he's like, I don't even want to look at that. I give up. I'm not, you know. And this guy's like, yeah, play knight f2. What do I care? I almost think he didn't see knight f2. I mean, I almost think like he was like, oh, shit, knight f2. Maybe, I don't know. It's hard to believe he looked at it and thought, yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> now, obviously, I'm not telling you to play queen takes e4, but if I'm white here and I'm not playing that move, I'm, I'm playing that move. Because, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of knight f2. I'm afraid. All right. So knight f2. Now, he didn't play king takes f2. Uh, let's play it. Got to play something. And it's plus a billion or a trillion. I mean, it really is a plus a billion or a trillion. It's insane. Yeah, the engine announces mate. This is the quick mate. Queen f3 check. One legal move. Bishop c5 check. I mean, this is ridiculous. You can't go here because your knight's pinned. It's, it's just mate. Come on. What's wrong with everybody? All right. And then, you know, knight d4. I'm looking for a move that doesn't win, but I can't find it. This is mate in, in five, and this is mate in four. The rook is overworked. All right. So he has to play king g2, obviously, because king f1 didn't work. And now the reason knight e2 is bad is d4 check. So, okay, if you play queen e4, that's the engine move. And knight e4 obviously hangs the queen. So, in my opinion, not knowing the answer, I'm guessing, I think he didn't look at knight f2. I don't think he looked at knight f2 and, oh, yeah, that's fine. I think he just forgot about it. He played a3 and he forgot about Dre. Okay, so he knows king takes f2 loses. He knows that because that, that wasn't a lot of variations. Okay, now I'm threatening knight takes d1 and god damn all your, Jesus Christ. Okay, so he played take the bishop, take the bishop check. I mean, so black's a pawn up here. Black's up a pawn and he's like totally winning. So I, I think he just didn't see knight f2. I think he just lost his mind for a second. All right, so he tried to defend, but he failed miserably the lesson is never try. 
And he didn't resign, which is good. Okay. Now he forked the Knights. Okay. And Black literally didn't care. Um, every move wins for Black. The move he played, both these Knight moves win and D4 wins. Unleashing the latent potential of the Bishop, attacking the Knight, etc. He played this. That's fine. Knight E5 also wins. Okay, now, he played Bishop C1 attacking the Queen. If he takes the Knight, oh, give me the Knight. Okay, which he did not do. Then I check, and you have to play here because there's no other legal move. And then I go here, and now, uh, well, now you resign. Problem is, I'm threatening Queen F2, King H1, D4, discovered, triple checkmate. If you play here, which looks like a good defense, yeah, looks like. Then I play Queen E3 check. Obviously, King H1, Knight F2 is ridiculous. So you play King F1. Also, it's, you know, frankly ridiculous. And then D4 and you resign. Your queen's hanging. You can't take the bishop because of Queen F2 mate. Okay, resigns. Always resign. If you play Queen G1, Queen F3, god damn. Okay. All right, so instead of taking the knight, losing immediately, he played bishop c1, attacking the queen. It's lucky that he did, because now we see the beautiful finish. Beautiful. Okay? I mean, beautiful. Now, every move wins according to the engine. There's four or five winning moves for black. But he played by far the best one, knight g4. Okay, and the idea is if you take, not only do I fork your king and queen, but it's checkmate. Now that's a checkmate. Okay, so you can't take the queen because you get checkmated. Getting checkmated is bad. And the engine says black is only plus 10 here. If, if white plays perfectly, king g2, the only move. I mean, black's plus 10. But, okay. And then... Uh, this move is plus a thousand. This move is plus a thousand. Knight f4 check is a funny move. It's hard to understand, actually. D4 check is plus a thousand. This is plus a thousand. Let's play this because it's funny. That, that's a move I have a tough time understanding. <laughs> um, if you take it with a queen, which I would, D4 check, then I would play king h3. And then check, and I would play king h4. I mean, I would. And then queen e7 check. Oh, damn, this doesn't look good. And then you go here. That's what I would do. And then never play f6. Queen d7 also wins. Yeah, I mean, obviously, black's winning here. That's the worst king in chess history. Okay. Now, luckily, he didn't play king g2 because we got to see the most beautiful thing that's ever happened in the history of Earth. He played rook d3 attacking the queen. <clears throat> Lucky for us. And black played the best move, d4. God damn. Okay, now why did he play d4? Thanks for asking. The bishop controls g2, so now knight h2 is mate. Knight h2 wasn't mate previous move because of king g2. You can't take the queen either way because of knight here mate. You can't take the knight because the queen here, mate. Now, you got to stop knight here, mate, which isn't easy to do. I told you the mate in one move, and it's still hard to stop it. I mean, obviously, you can play a silly move, but, I mean, how can you stop knight h2? How do you stop knight h2, mate? The answer is fries. So he stopped knight h2 mate. He did. He played rook d1. Now knight h2 is not mate because of king e1. Obviously knight h2 wins, but he played a really, really, really nice move here. Really nice. Nice. R really nice. Was it nice? 
Right, I mean, night F, allowing night F2 is insane. If you look at the Fisher game with Byrne or the game Avery Gligorich, when they play night F2, you're like, huh. Like, you don't even know. Then later you're like, yeah, okay. Here it's like night F2 and like that's it. You're like, oh my God. This is much easier than those. It's like you're just crashing through. Yeah. That's right, D-Bass, because it's all about that base. About that base. Bam! God damn. And the point is, earlier I explained, after knight h2, white has king e1. After this, white does not have king e1 because the rook is defending e1. So the only legal move is this, and then mate. God damn! And that guy was the lower-rated player. Probably mad shouldn't allow, you know, knight f2 next time. So some people said that was the game of the year. I'm not willing to say that because White's defense was so silly, but I am. that is the game of the tournament so far. Might be the game of the year. I mean, if I had black in that game, I'd be really happy. I'd be really happy. Really happy. I would be like, man, you only play knight takes F2. God damn. So, yeah, that wasn't, uh, yeah, that's, knight F2, come on. Hooray. This game was played like eight hours ago. Every game that I showed today was played in the World Cup today. Okay, <clears throat> just so you know, tomorrow I'm also on Chess TV. I'll just do some random stream. Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm doing Arena Kings um, from 1 to 5 Eastern. And then... At 7 Eastern, I'm teaching a class on Zoom. The classes we have Wednesday night. You can sign up for that on the website and so forth. Uh, and then, and so forth. Then starting Saturday, for a long time, Saturday and then for a lot of days, I'm doing World Cup coverage that's for chess.com, which you saw today with Naroditsky, Ifan, and Topolov. It'll generally be me and Naroditsky. Uh, Danny Wrench, maybe sometimes. Ifan might hop on. And he might have a special guest like Anand at some point. But, you know, Anand's going to be like for 10 minutes. So basically me and Naroditsky for most of it. And that'll be July 17th to 30th. Almost every day I'll be doing commentary. So the more commentary I do, the more they pay me. So forth. Anyway, that'll be uh, on the chess.com uh, Twitch page. Twitch? I mean, yeah, Twitch. I get Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and I'm probably missing two of them. I only have Twitter and Twitch. I feel like I have something else. Twitter, Twitch. I don't have Instagram. Don't have Snapchat. Don't have Facebook. Does... um. Does that thing still exist from 20 years ago? What's the thing that was with Facebook, I mean, that rivaled Facebook that they gave up? MySpace. Does MySpace still exist? Does it exist? Yeah. I, I have a Discord, yeah. MySpace does exist? Technically... Man, I'm getting a lot of no and yes. You guys can argue amongst yourselves. I used to go on TikTok, and then I realized I was more than six years old, so I deleted it. But, you know, sometimes trying to learn sends me a TikTok that's not funny. Um, but I've heard of TikTok. Yeah. My stace does exist? Wow. Karen has AOL email, and so does Wes Berger. So they still exist. 500 cents of juice. Thank you. <clears throat> I've heard of OnlyFans, but I've never been there. I'm sure it's great. You just went to MySpace right now? Damn. I mean, the song White and Nerdy by Weird Al, you know, he, ta he, he, he talks about MySpace. That's one of the things he mentions. So, you yeah. know. No, I haven't spoken to Anand in a long time. Um, 
Probably in St. Louis was the last time we spoke. That was probably about three years ago. I don't think we've spoken since. You know, we're guys, so we know whatever. When we see each other, we're like, hey. Uh, let's see. I've heard of Reddit. I've been to Reddit. Usually because somebody says this is on Reddit, go look at it. I'm not like sitting home going, oh, I'll go on Reddit now. I've never done that. But if somebody's like, hey, here's a link to Reddit and look what they're saying about you, then I might go. Uh, et cetera. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. And I'll see you Wednesday, um, either for the class I'm having Wednesday night or for the chess.com uh, Arena Kings where I'll be doing commentary. All right. Now, who do I raid? I raid you. You raid me. Thanks, Peter, for the things. And buy Peter's book. Do as I say. Let's see. Who am I raiding? Ah, oh, I spelled raid wrong. I'm not even kidding. I mean, I'm kidding a little, but I'm not kidding at all. All right. Let's see. Man, this didn't work out well. It's like on caps lock. Yeah, it was on caps lock. And I, and I spelled raid wrong. That might have worked now. Da, da, da. Okay, it worked. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that stream. Bye.